Hey guys, it's Mrs. Kleinley with this week's First Chapter Fridays. This week we're going to be looking at Roll With It by Jamie Sumner. This is a realistic fiction book, and I think kids who like Wonder, kids who like Save Me a Sea, kids who like realistic fiction in general are really going to like this book. Um, and I think this is a book that a lot of students can relate to. Our main character, as you can see, is in a wheelchair. She has cerebral palsy um, and she loves to bake. That's definitely a passion that she has. And it's just her and her mom. Her, she does have a dad, but he, their parents are separated and she doesn't see her dad a whole lot. And her grandfather has Alzheimer and he is really declining. So um, if you're not familiar, that's when it oftentimes happens with older people. They're, they begin to forget where they are. They don't always make the best choices. They forget people in their life sometimes. Um, their brain just kind of starts to diminish. So Ellie and her mom end up going to stay with the grandparents. She develops some really, for the first time, um, some really great friends. So let's jump into Roll With It. The first chapter is called Symmetry. It's kind of hard to watch the Great British Bake Off over plates of Stouffer's lasagna, especially since it's been in the freezer a while. The edges are dry and crusty, but this is about all the cooking mom chooses to do. She says she likes to leave the fancy stuff to me. Really, though, she just doesn't have the energy to think about fixing anything that doesn't come with directions on the box. Our TV is so old and tiny that I have to lean in to see what Mary Berry is pursing her lips about. The bakers are making English muffins, and she's giving the stink eye to the red-headed guy who didn't let his dough rise enough. If I were on that show, Mary wouldn't have to tell me how long those muffins need to rise. Any fool with a Betty Crocker cookbook or Google knows to let it double. I picked at a shriveled string of cheese on my plate. Mom's phone rings, and Mom hits pause right as Mary is about to call out the top three English muffins. I already know which ones will win. It's all about symmetry. They have to look exactly the same. Mom sets her food on the coffee table. She's barely touched it, but she picks up her phone and walks into the hallway. She says, hello, like the conversation has already run an hour long. It has to be Mima. I saw off another bite of lasagna with my knife and review what I'm going to say if the phone rings again and it's about what went down at school today. But there's not a single scenario where I don't get grounded. Grown up trumps kid like paper beats rock. Depending on how grandpa's been doing lately, this could either be a really quick conversation or a really long one. I take my chances and hit play. I'm right about the muffins. When mom still hasn't come in by the credits, I push back from the table and roll into the hallway. She's sitting on the floor with her legs stuck out and the phone in her lap. How bad was it? He locked your grandmother out of the house and called 911 to report a burglary. Whoa. Yeah. Did the cop show up? No. He's done it enough time that she reprogrammed the emergency button on the house phone to go to call her. Smart. Not smart enough to remember to put out a new hide a She had to go to the neighbor to break in a window. I can picture it. Grandpa whispering into the yellow phone on the wall about voices and eyes looking in at him from the dark. Poor Mima. I wonder which window they had to bust. I pop her lasagna in the microwave. If it's not Mima on the line, it's Lauren, my aide, calling to tattle on me. Which, I check the clock, might still ha happen tonight with my luck. I'm not a bad kid. Really, I'm not. It's just that anybody who sees a girl in a wheelchair thinks she's going to be sunshine and cuddles. Sorry for having an opinion. Sorry for not thanking my lucky stars you get to follow me to the toilet three times a day. And sorry for not loving the fact that someone else has to carry my tray to the table at lunch and that I have to wait at the back of the bus, coughing in the loud cloud of exhaust while the wheelchair lift goes down as slow as Christmas. I'm sorry for needing a little space, but mostly I'm sorry I let the whole being stuck in a wheelchair thing get to me today. I wish I could have brushed it off like usual. Then I wouldn't be in this mess. Mom wanders in from the hallway and slumps down at the kitchen table. The microwave beeps and I plop the lasagna in front of her. It slides across the plate like a wet sock. Probably tastes like one too by now. I push the plate forward with one finger until it's about to topple off into her lap and she picks up a fork. I can't stop thinking about what happened at lunch. It so wasn't a big deal until everybody made it a big deal. I mean, I get it. 
Lauren's whole entire job is to chaperone me from place to place. So when I pull a runner and disappear, it kind of makes her look like she's slacking. So there I was, sitting at the end of the row of tables and away from everybody else like a doorstop. And it was loud. And not the kind of loud you can tune out. And it was chilly day. The whole place smelled like meat chunks. Barf. So I packed up the sandwich I made with cranberry relish and goat cheese, which mom says isn't a sandwich because it doesn't have meat, and I left. I just put all on my lap and rolled out the, down the back hallway that leads to the exit doors by the gym. I sat in a little ray of sunlight that snuck past the dumpster outside and finished my lunch. And then the bell rang. I just needed another minute was all, except when Lauren found me, I might have been dozing in the sunspot and it might have been after too much travel time had passed for me to blame it on my chair, but I wasn't going to skip class, really. The thing is, kids skip class all the time and yeah, they get in trouble, but nobody freaks out about it like they do with me because I am a health risk. And okay, yes, it was maybe a teensy bit antisocial to go and eat in a corner by the dumpsters, but sometimes it's all just too much. I get tired of bearing witness to everybody else's normal. I never got sent to time out when I was little. I think the teachers couldn't bring themselves to lock me and my wheels in the corner, but I wish I could now. I wish I could just declare a giant time out from school and people and take a long nap in the sun. Okay, guys. So again, our book this week is Roll With It by Jamie Sumner. It is found in our realistic fiction section under S-U-M for Sumner. I hope you enjoy. Happy reading.